just seems to me that they would take part of that assets and put it into, or that paper and put it into the real stuff. Yeah. Understand. And I don't have a clue. It just, it, it, I. Well, I, the, yeah, you know, I, I've I said guess this. I don't trust trust the Chinese government much. Maybe that's it. Well, well, here's 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 the numbers you have to keep in in mind. Uh, if you took all the gold that's ever been mined since the beginning of time, you're talking about five and a half billion ounces. Yeah, and and I've heard you know I've heard you say that less than an ounce per person on the planet. Sure. So I mean, we're dealing with a a commodity, and that's the reason it's called a precious metal, is because it's precious. Well, I well, fully understand that. How about one point four billion Chinese, of which about seven hundred and fifty billion are adults, and they work. They give you a pretty uh, vast market. Maybe they can't buy a lot individually, but. Uh, uh, they're buyers, and I've seen projections that they'll bypass India next year, and India's been taking down 30% of world production or so for a long time. And so they'll probably do the same thing. And there's going to be a tremendous upward pressure in the price of gold uh, as the years go by. It's not going to stop. And until we have real currency instead of fiat currency, uh, it's going to continue. And, of course, the bankers don't want gold back currency because then they can't speculate at 100 to 1. There'll well, be limitations of like 9 to 1 if we had a fractional system. And what would the backing be? 15, 25 percent in gold? Uh, that's a pretty tall order today. So the yeah, governments are in deep trouble. And oh, there's really? no currency that they can create that will pl- replace the dollar that's going to be any better. No, oh, and I and I fully understand that. Yeah, I just uh, like to say there's uh, you know watched this game for about 45 years now, and I uh, I'm I'm kind of like John. I'm suspicious of everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, I... but I do have a fantasy every night about uh, uh, some large groups of people uh, standing in line to uh, have their little trial on treason, and then the just punishment behind that. That's my fantasy every night. For years. Uh. Tar and feathering and also lighting the feathers. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, I'll let you guys go. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Kurt. You bet. By the way, Robbie, we're doing a sound check with your setup there. Say something, dear sir. Uh, we have a great Bob Chapman special today. Okay. Swiss francs. These are unique coins. Um, they're unique for many reasons. Uh, first, there's not a lot of them. <laughs> They are minted between 1897 and 1930. They contain 0.1867 ounces of pure gold. They're in brilliant, uncirculated condition. They're only $280 a piece. I'm getting old. I can actually remember when we started uh, on uh, on the network, uh, they were $125. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. And if you order 20 or more... You will receive a free subscription to the International Forecaster and a fine ceramic mug courtesy of RBM and 20 Swiss francs today will run you $5,600 delivered. By the way, my engineer says it's an M&M problem. It's an M&M problem? Yeah, you got your mug too close to the mic. No, I'm actually far away from it because <laughs> he told me about that already. Ah. Okay, okay. We're still working on because uh, yeah, you're okay. sounding bigger than the entire state of Arizona. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, we'll take the break. Eight hundred three one three ninety four forty three. We'll roll your calls after the break. George, Mike, Tony, Don, and others. All of you, hang on. We'll get to each and every one of you. We'll be right back. We are back. Uh, let's go to George in Texas. Hello, George. You're in queue, and you're on. Uh, how you doing, gentlemen? Hi. Yeah, uh, this uh, question is for Bob Chapman. You there, Bob? Yes, I am. Uh, I, I posted something on my blog, uh, on my website. Uh, it's about uh, about uh, Barack Obama going after the Congressional Black Caucus, especially the people that are on the chairmanship. It just comes apparent that... No one's safe, even in his own party, in his loyal supporters, 
are not safe from this man. Is there a historical perspective that this was done before? Not that I can recall. And you're right about that. You know, they went after Charlie Rangel. Of course, he's not purer than pure. And Maxine Waters. And that emanated from their own party. That's what I've been told by people who are in Washington, that this ethics situation is being pushed by the leadership. And it bears out what you're saying about the heat that's put on heads of committees. And some of them recently have brought forth amendments and watch them get destroyed. And then the commentary is, you shouldn't have brought it forth in the first place. And so you're right. Mr. Obama is getting his instructions from behind the scenes. He's not making no decisions. And he's doing what he's told to do. And he will continue to do so, so that he can live this life that he's living, and his wife can go to Marbella and live like a queen. Well, Bob, I kind of see it out with this banking reform bill. I just think this is going to be one of the things that breaks the straw on the camel's back, because I don't really think, you know, because I already talked to my bank, and I just said, if you're going to have snitches as bank tellers and, uh and, you know, you're not going to do, uh, defend your uh, your customers that hold money in your account. I'll just take my money and go somewhere else. Same thing with my Internet it, provider. I mean, we could have... You know, it is interesting you say that, and I'm glad you brought it out because it is part of the bill, the spying and and uh, and rewards, uh, 30, uh, what is it, 15 to 30 percent rewards for any money captured by wrongdoing. And uh, it, it's all part of a system that existed in East Germany for so long under the Stasi. And uh, the people who ran the Stasi were recruited for and paid by the Central Intelligence Agency when they should have been executed. They were brought to the United States and given instructions they gave instructions to the CIA on how to make a Stasi-like organization work. And they were paid handsomely for that as a reward for murdering thousands of people. And that's the same thing we've got, and that's where a lot of that information came from. And what they're going to do is nationalize the banking system under corporate fascism. And... Most of these banks will be taken over or put out of business, and they'll end up with 10 or 20 of them or whatever the figure is. One of the things that I really wanted to interject here is uh, I run into two subscribers who had substantial amount of money in banks, uh, usually in trusts, uh, which were managed by, managed by banks that they wanted to terminate. And the banks brazenly and arbitrarily would not deliver their funds to another place where they were designated to go to. And this has been going on for months. And we're talking about millions of dollars. And we're not talking just a few. I've had a number of people have this problem. So what I'm saying here is if you have money in the bank, you may not be able to get it out because I don't feel like giving it to you. Keep it in mind. Well, I kind of see it like this, Bob. Uh, how are we going to probably bring down this co- banking cartel? Just give them what they want. What do they want? What, lead? They've got everything. <laughs> no, but they give them what they want and, you know, let uh, let, let hell have its fury upon them. Because personally, I believe that uh, good always prevails over evil and and dynasties do fall. They don't last forever. That's only if the good people stand up and beat the evil down. When they're hungry, they will. Yeah. And... And I got another, one more question, Bob. I am still questioning why President Medvedev wanted to make the Russian ruble the world reserve currency. This is a currency that's not under the international banking control. And talking to some people in Russia, they don't really want that. 
I mean, because it is. Well, I, I think more, uh, first of all, they know that's not going to happen. Uh, second of all, they're not in a position to have it happen uh, from a fundamental and technical uh, viewpoint because their biggest money earner is just oil. And, um, and yeah, they have other things that they export, but oil is the main thing. Not wheat. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is psychopolitical warfare. This is warfare against the United States. You got to remember, they were subjected for a, almost a, well a hundred years by their own people, people who were sent there from New York and London and Paris to run their country, and then the U.S. had the money to de defeat them as they were, and that this is a little payback giving the U.S. a hard time. Any international bankers. We'll be right back.